Good morning. Ooh, that's loud. <laughs> Lovely to see so many of you here this morning on a rather beautiful morning after the wetness of yesterday. It is lovely to be back with you as well. Um, and thank you so much to all of you who were able to celebrate with um, Sam and myself just over three weeks ago, hard to believe, um, for our part two wedding celebration. And thank you to those as well who sent love and thoughts and um, cards to us. It was really kind and we felt um, uplifted on that day. We also enjoyed um, a lovely couple of weeks away on the Isles of Scilly. Um, and I'm really hoping that that is not the last time that we go because it was lovely, amazing. I would recommend. Including, um, yes, one incident with some golden pheasants on Tresco who took rather a liking to our rum and raisin fudge. But I think that's probably a story for another time. <laughs> you can ask me about that one. Um, this morning, Jeremy will be preaching later in the service not quite sure at what point in the service that will be because he is coming down from St Bridget's where he's taking the service up there so we will play it by ear um, possibly have an extra hymn somewhere thrown in and whenever he comes down we will have the sermon at that point just to say for your prayers as well um, Jonathan is in the grip of a rather nasty chest infection at the moment um, and I know that Tracy and the kids have also had a similar thing. So if you could just keep them in your prayers, because um, obviously it's not a very nice thing to, to be going through. After the service, there will be tea and coffee served in the church room. Thank you, Les and Joe, for that. Um, so do make your way over to the church room if you'd like refreshments after the service. There will also be prayer ministry available um, in the prayer corner at the back. Um, Della, Richard and Vicky um, will be making that available to anyone who would like that. I'm encouraging, um, well, ask that everyone wears a face mask for that and there will be distancing as well. Also, after the service, there will be a double baptism happening here um, in the church, which is very exciting. Um, so we will pray for Frankie and Piper, who are going to be baptised um, later as part of our prayers. There are rather a few people um, expected to come to that service as well. Um, so again, would encourage conversations to be taken over to the church room so that we can rejig chairs and set things out for that, if that's possible. Before we um, start with our opening prayer, a note was shared with the prayer ministry team just before the service um, and I'm going to share this with you now um, as it might speak to some of you here today and your current situations. So it says some may feel that they are in the chrysalis stage, a bit dry and not fulfilling their purpose. God wants to bring you to the butterfly stage, not only beautiful but fulfilling God's will. So we pause for a moment as we still our hearts and minds and come into God's presence here with us today. Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We pray together. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we worship God through the words of our first hymn, which is Crown Him with Many Crowns. And do invite you, if you're able, to stand for that.
Hello, Jeremy. <laughs> we sing a hymn and he appears. <laughs> So we come to the time where we remember and call to mind those things in our lives that have not been as they ought to have been. And we bring them to God, knowing that we come to a Father who loves us and knows all that we are and loves us even because of that. So God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you, and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. And we listen to a song that speaks of how God sees us, looks at us as his children, and loves us with a love that is almost beyond understanding. So we listen to Reckless Love. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. took a breath, you breathed your life in me, and you have been so, so kind to me.
shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall we stand to sing in response how deep the father's love for us
It's Hebrews 1, 1 to 4 and 2, 5 to 12. <clears throat> Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he spoke to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, for whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his wonderful, powerful word. When he had made purification for the sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere What are human beings that they are mindful of them? Or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honour, subjecting them all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all these things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see it anything, everything in subjection to them. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while, while he was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honour because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he may taste death for everyone. It is fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I praise you. This is the word of the Lord. We have our gospel reading. reading is taken from Mark 10, verses 2 to 16. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, 
for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not perceive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Before I start, one short notice, um, which probably hasn't been picked up. We're meant to be restarting Losh and Nasser this month, and it would have been on Tuesday. But because the deanery have decided to have a quiet day here, we've shoved it to the next week. So Losh and Nasser is not this coming week, it's the week after, 12.15, church room. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. And if you are struggling in a relationship of any kind, those words from Psalm 67 may be of comfort. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Some of you may have observed, I do like the traditional idea of starting with a text from one of the readings, but today's don't seem to be too easy. So, let's have two instead and see where we go. From the Hebrews, he is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. And for Mark, and he took them up in his arms, laid hands on them, and blessed them. What is the connection, you might say? Well, it's the same person. It's the same Jesus. The exact imprint of God's glory It's the same human Jesus who takes the little children in his arms and blesses them. And he takes us in his arms and blesses us. What a wonderful God we have. I'm not going to chat about the Christology of the Hebrews. That's for another time, maybe. But of the down-to-earth human Jesus of first century Palestine and how his teaching is for us in the 21st century. After last Sunday's service here, Jenny came up to me and asked what I was preaching about next Sunday. As she was leading the intercessions and the readings were all about divorce and difficult stuff. I hadn't looked that far ahead. Oh no, a difficult set of readings. Jonathan, what are you doing to me? I couldn't even complain that Bravely didn't come this morning. (laughs) You probably know he's not too well. I thought maybe it's time for cucumbers and garlic again. And for those who were not here last week, I can explain later. I did have a look at the Old Testament reading. It's from the beginning of Job. Not easy stuff, so... (laughs) I do have a suspicion that the Mark reading about divorce and adultery are one that eggshells that preachers might try to avoid could be a case of walking on eggshells. And even Jo admitted she was pleased she wasn't preaching. (laughs) Next time round, Jo. And I don't want to walk on those, and I won't. So don't worry. You're not going to get a 19th century thumping sermon on divorce and marriage and other things. I did come across an interesting fact I didn't know. The Mosaic law only gave gave permission for men to divorce their wives. And it seems it was quite an easy process. 
Thus the reply of the Pharisees in verse 4. All her husband had to do was write out a certificate of divorce, hand it to her and send her packing. Poor woman. How unjust. Even to a mere man it seems all wrong. However, in first century Palestine the local Greek customs were prevailing and women could divorce their husbands. It seems that divorce was getting easy and common. Perhaps too easy. But that was Jesus' message. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. In, um, in thinking about what to talk about today, the thought of relationships came to mind quite speedily. Not specifically in marriage. Maybe not at all. But all our relationships with other people. I think we found out in lockdown, haven't we, how much of a social species we are. We need relationships with others. It might be spouses or partners or brothers and sisters, parents, grandparents, children, grandchildren, and of course friends and colleagues. And how our relationships with them can be very important. It's what sustains us. We might have been in all sorts of stressful places with our relationships when the first lockdown happened. And then it all suddenly, it stopped. We couldn't go to work. We couldn't go to school. If we lived alone, we didn't see anyone. If we lived with someone or in a family, we only saw them. That tasted, that tested relationships. It really did. Personally, as you know, I live alone since losing my dear Jane. All of a sudden it stopped. I felt abandoned. I didn't see anyone. I don't think I touched anyone for three or four months. Of course I wasn't completely abandoned. People started to phone and vice versa. I chatted to neighbours over the fence or in the drive. And relationships were starting to be established. Maybe a bit differently. But for others, it was completely different. I realised, talking to people afterwards, if you take a couple with a two or three children, suddenly instead of both going to work and the children going to school, all the busy family life of swimming and football and brownies and homework and friends and down the pub, they're all confined to a house and a garden if they're lucky. They're working from home, then there's homeschooling. Relationships must have been strained. It almost sounds easier to be living alone. And of course there are myriad other situations and all your situations will be different. How did we cope? How did we cope? How should we have coped? I know I didn't go do too well. I really blew my top at someone after a couple of months. I know I shouldn't have done, and at least I apologised, but it wasn't easy for us. And where are we now? I somehow don't think it'll ever be quite the same. Maybe your relationships need repairing, or maybe you've come through it very, very well and strengthened. It's, um, it's strange how our ideas form, take form writing sermons and talks come together and other sources seem to edge in from the side. I got as far as thinking about these various relationship ideas a few days ago, well, beginning of the week, when I looked at the words for the day material, I expect some of you to take the word for the day here. For the first three days of last week, starting last Monday, the subject is think more about others. 
That's relationships, isn't it? So yes, think more about others. See their point of view. Not so easy, perhaps. Quoting from the material is this. Selfishness is defined as a state of being overly concerned with one's self. Hmm. Perhaps we all have a bit of that. Or maybe you don't. Perhaps not the best way for a happy relationship, whether in marriage or families or friends or work situation. So think more about others. Another quote. We should decide that I will not let this day pass until I have said or done something to help, bless and encourage another human being. Oh my. I wonder how often I achieve that. Or maybe it could be in the could do better box. Shall we try that? Every day, try to do something to help someone else. Or maybe you all are doing it already. It talks, that passage, about expressing kindness and generosity to others. Kindness. Generosity. How about another coincidence, or maybe it's a God incidence? So I was halfway through writing this, and then... Yesterday I went to the annual reader service in the cathedral, attended by Bishop Ruth and the Dean and various other dignitaries and someone in a, a lawyer with a, what they call them, wig on and lots of us readers. And Bishop Ruth welcomed, she wrote, this year as a diocese we have been dwelling on the words from the book of Colossians. As God's chosen ones Holy and beloved, close yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. Kindness again. Kindness. Relationships aren't always easy. But the more kindness we show the better the relation should be. Relationship. Of course, it may not work for everyone. But we are Christians. We should be kind. I keep saying that word, sorry. It's important. Jesus said to our neighbor, to love our neighbors as ourselves. But he didn't, it wasn't just said. He says it. He still says it. Love our neighbors. Love our friends. Love our families. Paul wrote to the Galatians, and you know this so well, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against such things. Kindness and generosity, again. Last Sunday... Not sure why I was preaching two Sundays in a row. It just happened. I'm sorry about that. Blame Jonathan. Last Sunday, I paused and asked you to think and pray for any problem or worries in your own life. And hopefully it helped. Today, I think perhaps we should think of someone or person who has been especially kind to us during lockdown or during COVID. So, just in a moment of quiet, just offer the name of the person or persons up to God and thank them through God. It's a moment of quiet.
Thank you, Lord. Of course, I'm not trying to be simplistic here. Kindness will not sort out all problems in relationships. But it might just stop them going wrong in the first place. And isn't mutual kindness in a relationship, families, couples, friends, anything so good? And just before I close, I've got something. I've, I've read this before, but no excuses, you may have forgotten. My young granddaughter, Millie, and I was going to say 10, and she's not 10, she's 11. If I told her she was 10, I'd get the death stare. <laughs> Anyway, the Christmas school exercise some time ago, she must be six or seven, she wrote, well, the teacher wrote, must have written it for her, but Millie wrote, my gift to the world would be love everyone, everyone be kind, everyone shares. Everyone be kind. I've got that stuck to my fridge, the fridge made it. And this is the loving God we have. It starts, he is the reflection of God's glory. And that is the Jesus who takes us in his arms and blesses us. What more kindness can we ask for? So may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. As we come to our affirmation of faith, let's just keep in mind that image of Christ as the one who is in glory and glorified, but who also holds open his arms to little children and to us. So we stand. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sit for our prayers of intercession. Loving God, we welcome you among us as we gather this morning. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds that we may receive your wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. We thank you for giving us so much to enjoy in your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all humankind, especially for those suffering poverty, persecution, slavery, oppression, 
injustice and the effect of conflict. We consider ourselves fortunate in this country that we have a successful COVID vaccination program. We pray for those areas in the world where this is not the case. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community, for all who live and work in this parish. We give thanks for the continued success of the community hub cafes and for the fellowship and love which is to be found amongst the members of our church family. This morning, we especially remember Frankie and Piper, who are to be baptised after this service. We ask for your blessing on them and their families on this happy occasion. We also ask for your continued blessing on all who worship here and to give us a spirit of love and forgiveness that sees only the good in each other, that bears no grudge and forgives all grievances. And may we learn to think of others before ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those people who feel unwanted, forgotten and lonely, who do not have the comfort of their families and friends. Help them to know that your love for them is constant and you are always at their side. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, Father, we are one family on earth and in heaven. We remember in your presence those who have died and give thanks for their lives. Lord, we are humbled at your greatness and power, your gentleness and love. Help us to worship you in our words, in our thoughts, and most especially in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We stand now for our final hymn, which is Lord of All Hopefulness.
God, our judge and saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love, that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.